With geostationary orbits, the satellite is always over the same point on the surface of the Earth. However, with sun-synchronous orbits, that position is always changing. In this example here, we see an example of a satellite that started here and it made its first orbit of the Earth. Comparing this position at the equator here where it started to this position here after its first orbit, it would be offset by approximately 2,875 kilometers. Of course, that distance would grow closer, um, further away from the equator. It wouldn't be that great of a distance. And um, this first pass would take approximately 100 minutes, so under two hours in order to, um, in order to complete its first orbit of the Earth. The second orbit of the Earth would, would continue on in a similar manner, and once again at the equator, going from uh, where it started to the end of the first orbit to the end of the second orbit, each of these intervals here would be 2,875 kilometers apart, and now it's 200 minutes later than when it started this orbit, and so on. And as we can see, if, if this continues happening more and more, within, by the time we reach 14 orbits, we're going to be completely around the Earth. So the 15th orbit um, is going to be somewhat of a repeat, except slightly offset from this first orbit that we're seeing here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This is a flat map now, but it's showing the first orbit of this satellite, which is the, a Landsat satellite, starting here, then coming over on this side here, the second orbit, the third orbit, and until we get to the 14th orbit. Once it finishes the 14th orbit, it's back to... Um, it's on the 15th orbit now, which is much closer than that, um, than that previously reported 2,000 plus kilometers. Now we're down to um, a, a much smaller offset here, which is approximately 159 kilometers away from orbit one. So orbit one and orbit 15 um, are much closer together. There's actually gonna be overlap in their images and um, it's going to just continue like that, orbit after orbit, until all of the space in between is filled with every 15th orbit, the beginning of every uh, 15th orbit, being um, similarly offset until it catches up with number two here. So once again, here's um, an orbit, um, orbit one on day one. One day later, this is going to be like number, if this is number one, this is going to be like number 15 here, the first orbit of the next day. And as we can see, there will be some overlap there. The difference at the equator is 2,875, but these are only 159 kilometers apart. And so we are actually able to get overlapping images in this way here. And with these sun-synchronous orbits, again, one thing again to remember is that those, hopefully those images will look similar to each other because it's keeping the sun at a constant hour angle. This is one of the big ideas be behind the sun-synchronous orbit that um, the sun will always be at the same angle to the place where the satellite is directly overhead. So even though in this past example here, we might be getting a scene over America here where we have one scene taken here, one scene taken the next day, those two um, images should be say, taken at the same time of the day, and because of that, that, um, that sun angle will be approximately the same. So because these sun synchronous orbits, once again, they're, they're not going over exactly over the north and south pole, they're tilted at about a uh, nine degree angle, so that the edges of the image that they take are also going to be tilted. If this is a, and sometimes we call this a scene, this is just one image from Landsat, where we cover an, an area of approximately this size. If, we, if this is Monterey, California, San Francisco, Sacramento, California, this box here would represent how big one of those um, sun synchronous scenes would be. And of course, as this satellite continues, it would be moving, if this is Landsat from north to south here, um, the next image would be down in this area here, and there would be some overlap on its edges. And then the next day, when it's making that 15th pass, there would be some overlap here so that we would have these overlapping satellite scenes as we, um, as we go through time. And this is one example of a scene, right? This was actually the first scene, and once again from Landsat, with, uh, with showing kind of the traditional sort of tilt we see often associated with these images. And if we put a bunch of those images together, we can mosaic those, this is what it would look like. So this is showing, um, not in true color, but in false color, this area um, in Southeast Asia. 
and it's showing what the overlap would look like as far as how these images overlap. So um, on one pass, on one orbit, the satellite took this image, then this image, then this image, then this image, then this image, and so forth. And the next day took this image, and this image, and this image, and this image, and this image. And the next day took this image, and this image, and this image, and so forth. So in this way, we can get, um, we can get coverage of an entire area over a number of days and with sun synchronous orbits the angle of the sun should be about the same and hopefully those will fit together into a um, into an image that um, covers a larger area and that can be interpretable in a continuous manner.